more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. I top billing ask and you shall receive because many people on my last content piece, the sad saga of Dan Mullen remarked that they do not believe your man Dan Mullen will fire anyone. And they ask, will he fire Todd Grantham? Not only did he fire Todd Grantham, he did John Hevesy in too. 86, both those dudes. And those are two of the sore spots on the team. So it had to happen. Anybody with half a brain knew that. Now, listen, we're going to move this past that. I want to talk about a few candidates to replace Grantham. We can get to the offensive line at another time. But I wanted to talk about that last piece right there because there's nothing like having a, a detailed 15-minute piece of exactly what you think about a situation and then have people not get it, not be able to comprehend. People coming in there talking about, well, Murph, after the loss to South Carolina, how do you feel now? And I'm like, what? What would change? <laughs> I said Florida's not a good team. Nobody thought Florida would be a good team who actually is unbiased. I said that only people who thought that Florida was going to be some type of national championship team were Florida fans. So what are we talking about here? I had all that shit that I said, and some of you do still came with that. So South Carolina lost or lost to anybody else past this. I don't care how bad or anything does not change the fact that Florida's not a good team that needs to recruit better. So when you don't recruit at that level and you lose generational talent, you're going to have down seasons. He's playing the type of ball and he has the type of program to where he's coaching guys up who aren't ready to play right away. So having that type of infrastructure means that you may have some years where it doesn't come together for everybody at the same time and you're trying to piece it together. So maybe next season, maybe the season after, I don't know. You'll see him with one of these teams maybe like every, I don't know, two or three seasons to where it looks a lot better than it does because the recruiting is not at a blue chip level to where cats are coming in a lot more likely ready to play. It doesn't mean just because some goofball at some recruiting service uh, ranked them a five star or a high four star that they're ready. But more times than not, we can see the guys who are ready to come in and contribute. Not many people like that that they've recruited, I would say, within the last class or two. So you're going to have that kind of gap year sometimes. Now, beyond that, I just don't think Florida's a good fit. That's why I remarked, send him right here to my school, and I think it's a great fit because at a school like Virginia Tech or at Mississippi State, the expectations are a little bit more realistic. Now, Florida's been a great program in the past, no doubt about that some iconic coaches in Spurrier and Coach Meyer. But this is a different time period. I'm not so sure if Coach Meyer was here that he would have the same type of success for um, if you think about what teams in the division are doing, like a Georgia as far as how it's recruiting. And, well, maybe he'll be, he will be a lot better on the recruiting trail. There's no doubt about that. But you still have these guys who have – built some monsters that are recruiting where you would normally recruit at as well. Alabama is still Alabama. Coach Meyer did not have to deal with Alabama, and he got dealt with by Alabama and then subsequently got out of there. So he did not have to see this juggernaut the past however many years. And these guys are hogging up a lot of the great talent where a team like Florida recruits. So does Georgia. Um, you still have other – some. Ole Miss is better, and the Texas A&M has Jimbo Fisher at it. It's just a lot different. So not saying that Florida is can't get back to what it once was, but it may be a lot harder than people think. So the grass isn't always green on the other side. I never said that Dan Mullen was the greatest coach of all time. I come here, and I always talk about what? His play concepts, because I think he is a damn good coach orchestrator of offense I think that he's a great play caller he's very imaginative and I marvel at someone who can have a top three passing offense completely tailor an offense to a guy like Kyle Trask who all of you insurrectionists said that they wanted Emory Jones to play over this dude why did you say this and you were actually very 
very right to say this because history has shown he works better with guys like Emory Jones. So people are doing the hindsight thing, coming into the comment section, talking about some, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing because he played uh, Felipe Franks over Kyle Trask. Does Felipe Franks not fit more of what he was doing previously at Mississippi State, even what he did previously at Florida with those uh, mobile dual threat quarterbacks? Big arm guy like that, very much like a Nick Fitzgerald at the very least, what he was working with at Mississippi State. Come on, man. You know this. That's why y'all wanted Emory Jones to play. So don't pretend. And that's why I have the receipts here on the channel doing that Kyle Trask content, like I said, in that content item and showed people saying we all wanted Jones to start over Trask. So now all of a sudden Mullen doesn't know what he's doing. He knows that a lot of these guys just have to be coached up. Some of them are just not ready to play right away. Anthony Richardson, not ready to play full time. You could do him a, a solid where, where he only comes in in favorable situations until he's absolutely ready to play. And then he comes in and destroys it next year and is the number one pick in the draft. That's how you build your program there. Not putting a guy out there when he's not quite ready and having him take the lumps. And people say, well, just play him. It's a lost season. They just played him against Georgia. Then you get mad. He played at the LSU. He did very good in relief. If he would have started Emory Jones against Georgia, you guys would have been mad then too. It's like you guys can just say whatever because there's no repercussions to what you say. Come on, man. What are we doing here? But let's get past that. We already talked about that. I don't think it's a good fit. I wish Dan Mullen would go somewhere else and y'all could get a coach that is more suited for what they're doing right now or a lot closer. I think you guys want a media savvy coach. He does not care about media. He's going to tell y'all anything because who cares about the media? <laughs> if you're trying to be a coach, it's no different than Saban and those guys, to be honest with you, except that Dan Mullen's not winning this year or he hasn't won a national title. But he's going to just say whatever to the media. You guys ask him about recruiting like now and stuff. Who wants to talk about that? His man's just lost a football game. They're worried about that. So keep it a buck, man. Keep it 100. You already know what time it is. I don't think it's. I don't know, but we can make it a little bit better of a situation for him next year by going out for these guys right here. The first guy, obviously, would be Will Muschamp. That would be hard. That would be absolutely hard, but I don't think something like that can happen. Actually, I'm not going to say I don't think because I don't know if that'll happen or if it can happen. If you somewhere in a pivotal role like being a head coach, a prominent role, and then you're 86th out of there, you don't think any some feelings were involved or bridges burned and stuff like that? I don't know. I don't know. But if there wasn't, yeah, that would be hard. Because <laughs> that dude, no, he can coach some defense. He's, you, if you want to, whatever you want to say about Dan Mullen, he's the defensive version of Dan Mullen, right? He's going to, to me, always have some really good defenses or be very laden with defensive or being able to coach up defensive talent doesn't necessarily have to have five stars to coach them up he's just very good with defense and he's a relentless recruiter i've seen it myself guy is murderous on the recruiting trail he definitely fits what they do and y'all saw that when he was the head coach there before no need to really even talk about that much further if that could happen that would be awesome and you would take him away from the University of Georgia, where I think he's probably their next defensive coordinator. If the current defensive coordinator continues to do what he's doing, you would have to think he's going to get a head coach job, and Muschamp is just sitting right there. So I would hire him now if you could. <laughs> I know he has a contract. I would have something in place right now. I would throw the book at that dude. But to be honest with you, I would rather actually have his right-hand man if I were y'all because – I think this guy is a, a potential star in his own right, and he's younger. Uh, he's probably more in tune to what's going on right now. Travaris Robinson, you guys know about him. Obviously, he was there in Florida with Will Muschamp. I would like to see him be away from Will Muschamp and be a defensive coordinator and let him implement some of the things that he does. Another guy very much taught in that Will Muschamp manner, relentless recruiter. Kids love him. I know several kids he recruited. People swear by this dude, man. I want him to get his shot. I'm actually tired of a lot of these retreads. Why can't guys like this get their shot? Why do they have to take so long to get their shot? This guy is money. I'm telling you this right now. Can't 
co-sign him away from Mullen as far as scheme-wise and, and all that, but I would have to imagine it would be pretty seamless. He's got a lot of experience there under Muschamp being able to implement that. Muschamp loved the guy. Like I said before, everybody else loves this guy. That should be the guy. But I wanted to put this particular individual out here, this next guy, because I don't think too many people know about him. And I think I think he's going to eventually kill it one day. And that is Jess Simpson. Ironically, at the University of Miami, where Travaris Robinson is, he's the defensive line coach. I've known about this guy for like 15 years. Uh, back when I was in Georgia, and your yeah, man, Jess Simpson is a superstar. He was a one year, I think he won or two years at the University of Miami and destroyed it. I mean, they had guys left and right getting pressure. He was clearly an upgrade over the previous guy. I forget who it was at the University of Miami. Then the Falcons wanted him. He went after that to the Falcons with uh, Dan Quinn and those guys, and then, of course, with those guys let go or – I forget how that goes, but he goes back to the University of Miami right now. But he made his way in high school, at the high school level, at Buford High School, one of the best high schools in all of the country, in the best area for football, in my opinion, at least per capita. Gwinnett County, Georgia, that man destroyed it. He had a straight-up dynasty there at Buford, and he's put so many kids into college football, high-level kids, and you would think the inroads that he has at a, at a place like that could be beneficial to what they need to do on the defensive side of the ball or just re- with recruiting in general, having that type of inroad in Gwinnett County. That would be hard. That would be extremely hard. So I don't know Mullen's relationship to these guys. Mullen, Mullen doesn't seem like a guy who just has the half. I don't know. He is pretty loyal, which is not a bad thing. Kids see this. You guys don't understand. You're very counterproductive to what you want to happen. You talk shit about your coaches. You talk shit about the players. You boo your players and stuff. Then you say, oh, I wish we could recruit better. You don't think recruits see that shit? Come on. They see it. I'm telling you this right now. I've been around these kids. Help kids get recruited there. They see everything. You're being counterproductive by doing this. They're going to they look at that and be like, well, that's not really a place I want to go. It doesn't look very stable. He could be fired any minute Uh, the the fans could boo me any minute if I'm not perfect right away. And they want me like they wanted Emory Jones for three years to play over everybody. And then after three games, he's trash. They need to go somewhere else and stuff like that. It's just very flimsy. I think you could do yourself a favor. I don't even know what I'm talking about. If you see some of these comments from some of these dudes, it's like the blind leading the blind. This is definitely going to fall upon deaf ears because people are just going to do what they want to do on the Internet. Because like I said before, no repercussions to it, but the repercussions happen on the field. And then you complain about that, too. So I don't know. But it's definitely a fun topic to think about Florida with another defensive coordinator and another offensive line coach and where they could go, because it is Florida. I would have to imagine what, one of the top five programs in the entire country? At top 10, you keep for sure top 10, but top five? It's definitely one to where if everything is rolling, they can win a national championship, but I don't know. Dan Mullen's just a different type of guy. Gave you the insider information. They do stuff a little bit different. These guys are moving on the trail at some of these other places that recruit very well. They move a lot different. I don't want to put people's business out there, get people in trouble, but you guys know what I'm talking about. By any means necessary, I don't think Dan Mullen is that type of dude. He's not going to lie to guys. He's going to be a lot more loyal to people. That's what people don't understand. He's being loyal to these guys he recruited or these guys that he coaches. And you guys are like, oh, you look at them as numbers, right? He's looking at these guys as people that he recruited. So so y'all don't care. It's just number 13 or whomever it is out there on the field in the jersey. You've seen enough of them. All right, he's gone. Let him him go. He doesn't think that way. And to me, I think kids will play for a guy like that. But I don't know. Like people said before, it's like, has he lost the team with the South Carolina thing? I'm like, that's dumb. I don't believe that for one second because you have to have some pride in what you're doing as a player, first and foremost, because what you're putting out there on film reflects upon nobody but you ultimately. What are you going to do? You're going to go to the NFL scouts and be like, well, I didn't want to play for the coach, so I decided to not do my best and put out bad film so I can not get drafted and not make generational wealth 
in a game to where only like one percent of the people who've ever played it make make it to the professional ranks think about it i don't know man these are just my thoughts or whatever you can Take from it what you want. I know people going to come in and twist my words and not comprehend shit that I'm saying. So it obviously doesn't matter. But I appreciate you guys who do. I appreciate you people who frequent the channel. Uh, thank you to the guys who send in quality support. Keeps the lights on here, right? And we got some different lights to keep on here, baby, in the great Commonwealth state of Virginia. And, uh, yeah, man, it's going to be cool. So we'll keep up with this. Uh, those are the first three names that I thought of. We'll think about some more names and where they can go from this. I think it shouldn't stop there, though. I think they should probably clean house. If I'm, <laughs> he should be able to change a whole bunch of coaches like, who did that? Was it Jim Harbaugh? I think Jim Harbaugh did that one year. Brian Kelly, I think, did it at Notre Dame, and the results were actually a lot better. So even Nick Saban did it one time. Remember all those coaches he had to replace? I think he wanted – to go the opposite. I think he had a lot of good recruiters and he wanted better coaches. So I don't know. Sometimes it's just change is just necessary. Right? But it's your boy Murph, the Underground King. Thank you for rocking with your boy. Top billing sports. And I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.